his way. Kevin Feige is doing a good job of maintaining the essence of Captain Marvel from the comics, but is actually changing a heck of a lot about the character for his MCU. Uh, now, in the comics, basically, here's a quick refresher, because I'm surprised how many of you are totally unfamiliar with this character. Although, actually, when you think about her comic book sales, maybe I'm not. Uh, but anyway, uh, Cree alien Marvel is working undercover in an Air Force base when a Cree device explodes. Uh, Air Force officer Carol Danvers is also caught in the explosion. Uh, and her DNA is rewritten, uh, making her part Cree with superhuman abilities. She not only goes on to become an Avenger and even leads the team, uh, and then gets into a very nasty, unsympathetic fight with Tony Stark in Civil War II. Uh, that comic book event was meant, I think, to raise her profile, but all it did was make, I think, a lot of comic book readers not like her very much. But anyway, she then also uh, took over uh, Alpha Flight, where the t that team that, you know, it was formerly the Canadian superhero team, but that was, well, they were still Canadians, but Canadians in space! Yes, reimagined as Earth's first line of defense against alien attacks, you know, right before you actually got to the planet. And I have to say, that comic uh, from the Agent Carter uh, showrunners was actually pretty darn good, at least for a little while. As I said, Carol comics don't sell, uh, which is why Marvel has to keep reimagining her title. Like, it seems like everyone, ev like, very frequently, a new version of the Captain Marvel comic comes out. Uh, and I think they're doing that not only because they're not working, but because she has a movie coming up and they have to have a Captain Marvel comic in print. Uh, so anyway, you can see echoes of that and what they're what we're already learning about her MCU movie. For instance, I'm sure her time with the with the Kree's elite Star Force will look pretty darn good on her resume when she returns to this old mud ball, right? Who should be Earth's first line of defense? How about the you know the one of us? Well, the, well, the Guardians are a whole bunch of problems on and off camera uh, right now. Uh, but you know, why not that person who has patrolled space for so long? I'm gonna make a whole separate video about Star Force, but it's kind of funny how Green Lantern-like they are, uh, down to even wearing green. Oh, Feige. As I told you, he loves to take shots at uh, the, the DCEU when he can. But the inspiration for this video was an interview with Brie Larson at Entertainment Weekly. They just did that big, that big spread, right, talking all about the movie, our first introduction to it. And she gave an interview about her character that really caught my attention, all right? Because she stated that part of Carol Danvers is Cree, uh, and it makes her, quote unquote, unemotional, an amazing fighter, and competitive. And in contrast, her human part is flawed. That doesn't sound like someone talking about their DNA getting altered, right? That sounds more like a hereditary conversation. What's inherited, right? When you talk about altering DNA stories, it's always about powers and things like that. It does not involve personality. It doesn't involve character traits. So, wow! Could this mean, could Brie Larson have inadvertently given away the fact that the MCU Carol Danvers is half Cree by parentage, right? Just as Peter Quill is part Spartax in the comics, part Celestial in the movies, we all said, as we've, as I've said, and as I've realized, and many of you agree, it's become clear that Kevin Feige likes to keep it simple. That's certainly simpler than an explosion rewriting DNA, right? Uh, and there's a, it, not only is there a precedent set by what happened with Peter Quill, but it also cements Peter Quill's situation, right? So if, but then here's the th something some of you might be typing and I'm curious about it too. If she is born with these abilities, which we assume includes the ability to fly, we've seen evidence of that, right? Why would she become an Air Force pilot, right? That doesn't seem to make any sense. But maybe she doesn't fly. Maybe she can just do extended hops or hover, right? Or maybe she just can't fly yet, uh, as not all Kree have powers at all. But some do, thanks to natural mutations, scientific tinkering, or technological enhancements. I think it's perfectly believable that Carol could level up in the movie uh, beyond the powers she starts out with at the beginning as a member of Star Force. Now let's bring Jude Law into this conversation conversation, right? Uh, Marvel Studios is refusing to, to reveal the name of his character in the movie. When he was cast, it was reported that he was playing Marvell, uh, the person, again, the, the, the undercover Kree who's caught in that explosion, uh, gives Carol uh, her powers and, you know, is her men mentor, etc. 
But now, all he's willing to say, Jude Law, is that he's fiercely devoted to not just his people, the Kree, but also to Carol. So much so that other members of Star Force don't understand their bond. They're like, why is she Kree teacher's pet, right? Could it be he's her father? An age difference that just makes it, right? Or maybe he's an uncle or some other alien blood relative. Oh, there's a precedent for this too in the comics. And as a comic fan, Ke uh, Kevin Feige loves these obscure details, right? And also, it, I think that he can point to it and say, I'm good, right? You can't, you can't get upset. No one ever gets upset with Kevin Feige for his changes. But anyway, uh, during the Kree Skrull War, it was revealed that Marvel had a child with a Skrull princess. Romeo and Juliet style. That child was later retconned to be Hulkling, uh, but Marvel, uh, rejoice Hulkling Wiccan fans, right? But Marvel has fathered a few kids, uh, including Phyla Vell of the Guardians of the Galaxy in the comics, and Janice Vell, who followed in his father's footsteps for a while before going mad. So why couldn't Carol be his daughter? Again, there's a precedent in the comics for Marvel having kids. So again, let's streamline it, let's simplify it as Foggy likes to do. Let's make it Carol Danvers. Uh, and it would, again, it would um, double down on the Peter Quill situation because of course more than one human got busy with an alien and produced a superhero uh, child, right? Uh, I mean, you would think there would be a whole database of that uh, with S.H.I.E.L.D., which they could, there, there could be, right? Now, side note, there is a burgeoning theory as we're starting to finally get information about the movie that Jude Law could be actually playing the villainous Yon Rog, who is an enemy of Marvel, and the whole Marvel thing could be a misdirect. Uh, now, Yon Rog was a militant Kree military commander, so you know it makes sense they'd be leading Star Force in the movie, right? Uh, and in the comics, it's revealed that his sabotage has, is what led to the explosion that gave Carol Danvers her powers. So in the movie. He could be aware of Carol's parentage, right? Maybe even still be her father or an uncle or a good friend who agreed to look after Carol as a favor, right? Or maybe to keep an eye on her and manipulate her into be a, being a weapon for him. We've seen that all the time in sci-fi fantasy, you know, sci-fi stories. Now back to Larson, if she, an Oscar-winning actress, can truly portray someone who has mixed alien and human heritage, uh, having that come through again in her personality, that would be really cool indeed. Uh, and while it was revealed that Captain Marvel isn't an origin story, this movie isn't an origin story, it kind of is anyway, because it is a movie about Carol Danvers literally doubling back to Earth to not only ask questions about her past, but, and I quote, her identity. Oh, that sounds like parentage to me, right? So what do you think of this theory. Quite frankly, as I said, Carol Danvers has never really captured readers' attention uh, in the comics or really, you know, even in animation, like, you know, hardcore fans will get excited, like, oh, they're doing Carol, Carol Danvers, but she just has not really caught on. So I think that she's a character ripe for melodramatic change. And I think this would actually, it would be very cool. And I think, again, easy and organic, literally organic, right? Uh, to explain to uh, non-comic book readers. So share your thoughts on this down below. Stay tuned for more Captain Marvel coverage. And until then, you can check out these other videos right now.